The screech of tires tore through the humid night air, pulling Officer Jack Miller from his reverie. He slammed the crumpled 20 into his pocket, the metallic tang of betrayal mingling with the stale donut glaze on his fingers. Another night, another bribe, another brick laid in the ever-growing wall separating him from the man he once swore to be. Jack navigated the flickering alleyway, his flashlight beam cutting through the shadows. A crumpled figure lay sprawled at the foot of a rusted fire escape, blood staining the grimy pavement. Panic flickered in his gut, a stark contrast to the practiced calm plastered on his face. This wasn't a petty theft, this was serious. The victim, a young man with terror etched on his face, whimpered incoherently. A gold chain, the telltale sign of a street hustler, lay snapped on the ground beside him. Jack spotted a shadowy figure lurking in a doorway, the glint of a knife catching the faint streetlight. Police, show yourself, Jack barked, hand instinctively tightening around his holstered gun. The figure hesitated, then melted back into the darkness. Jack knelt beside the victim, the stench of cheap cologne and fear assaulting him. Who did this to you? He demanded, but the only answer was a strangled gasp. The ambulance siren pierced the night, its urgency a stark reminder of the line Jack was perpetually teetering on. Every instinct screamed to pursue the attacker, but a different voice, cold and calculating, whispered in his ear. He recognized the assailant. Mikey the Blade Salucci, a small-time hoodlum with pockets deeper than they should be. Mikey had been buttering Jack up for weeks, small gifts and hushed promises exchanged in smoky backrooms. This attack, a blatant disregard for their arrangement, threatened to expose their partnership in the light. Jack's hand hovered over the radio, the weight of his decision heavy. Should he call for backup, risk exposing their deal with Mikey? Or should he bury it, another casualty on the streets, another soul sacrificed for the easy life? He looked down at the victim, barely clinging to life. A wave of nausea washed over him. This wasn't some drunk brawl, this was life and death. His badge, once a symbol of pride, felt like a searing brand against his chest. With a deep breath, Jack keyed his radio. Unit 27 requesting backup. Possible assault at the corner of Elm and 14th. His voice, shaky but resolute, echoed through the night, a turning point on the path he'd strayed from for so long. The sirens wailed closer, a beacon of hope in the darkness. Jack knew this was just the beginning. The price of his silence was due, and the bill might very well cost him everything. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, casting a sterile glow on the cramped interrogation room. Jack sat across from Captain Harris, the lines on the captain's weathered face etched deeper than usual. The silence stretched, thick with accusation. You're telling me you didn't recognize the assailant? Captain Harris finally broke the tension, his voice low and gravelly. Sweat prickled on Jack's neck despite the air conditioning. The lie tasted like ashes in his mouth. No, sir. Just another street mugging gone wrong. Captain Harris studied him, his gaze sharp as a hawk's. This victim, he's connected, goes by the name Lil Ricky, runs errands for Frankie the Hammer Moretti. Not exactly petty thieves. Jack swallowed, feigning ignorance. Never heard the name? Funny, the captain continued his voice laced with skepticism. Because according to our sources, there's been a discrepancy in your recent spending habits. Jack's stomach lurched. He knew they were closing in, the net tightening around him. I can explain, sir. Unexpected bills. Unexpected Rolex, Officer Miller, or that lavish apartment downtown. The captain slammed a file on the table, pictures of his new watch and swanky apartment spilling across the surface. Jack's carefully constructed facade crumbled. Shame washed over him, a tidal wave threatening to drown him. He had become the very thing he swore to fight against. The captain leaned back in his chair, his gaze unwavering. You know, Miller, when you signed up for this badge, you signed up for more than just a paycheck and a shiny gun. You signed up for honor, for integrity. Lately, I haven't been seeing much of either. Jack met the captain's gaze, a flicker of defiance igniting within him. I made a mistake, he admitted, his voice hoarse. But I called backup. Save that kid's life. True, conceded the captain. But what about all the mistakes you haven't corrected? 
All the opportunities you turned a blind eye to? Jack fell silent, the weight of his actions crushing him. The captain was right. The easy money, the thrill of power, had blinded him to the true cost. The erosion of trust, the betrayal of his badge. You've got a choice, Miller, the captain continued, his voice low and firm. You can cooperate, clean up this mess you've made, or... He left the sentence hanging, the unspoken threat heavy in the air. A wave of nausea washed over Jack. This wasn't just about his career anymore. He thought of his family, his wife's unwavering support, his daughter's hero worship. He couldn't let them down, couldn't let them pay the price for his choices. He took a deep breath, stealing himself. I'll cooperate, Captain. Tell you everything. The captain nodded, a hint of respect returning to his eyes. That's what I thought you'd say, Miller. But remember, trust is a fragile thing. Rebuild it or lose it all. The interrogation room felt smaller, the air thick with the stench of regret. Jack walked out, a man on a tightrope, the path ahead uncertain. He had to choose, redemption or a fall from grace that would take everything with it. The following days were a blur of meetings, depositions, and internal affairs investigations. Jack spilled his guts, detailing his corrupt dealings with Mikey Salucci, the protection money disguised as harmless gifts. The blind eye turned towards his illegal activities. The weight lifted from his shoulders was a double-edged sword. Relief at unburdening his conscience battled with the gnawing fear of the consequences. News of Jack's confession spread like wildfire through the precinct, Whispers and accusatory glances followed him like phantoms. Former colleagues, once friendly, now kept their distance. Even Captain Harris's once stoic demeanor held a tinge of disappointment. One afternoon, a familiar figure shuffled into the interrogation room. Mikey Salucci, his bravado replaced by a nervous twitch, sat across from Jack, a lawyer perched vulture-like beside him. You snitching on me, Miller? Mikey's voice was a strangled squeak. We had a deal! Jack locked eyes with Mikey, the image of Lil Ricky, pale and bloodied, flashing in his mind. The deal ended the night you left a kid for dead on the street. Mikey scoffed, but the defiance in his eyes faltered. The lawyer cleared his throat, adjusting his cufflinks. Officer Miller, in exchange for your client's cooperation, we're willing to offer leniency. Jack listened as they outlined the deal. Mikey would testify against Frankie Moretti, exposing his illegal activities. In return, he'd receive a reduced sentence. A flicker of hope ignited in Jack's chest. Maybe, just maybe, he could contribute to something bigger than himself. This wasn't just about clearing his name, it was about dismantling the very network that had corrupted him. What about me? Jack finally asked, his voice steady. The lawyer's lips pursed. Your cooperation will be taken into account. However, a formal disciplinary hearing is inevitable. Jack knew the risks. He could lose his badge, his career, possibly everything. But facing a possible future without the weight of his corruption felt strangely liberating. I accept the deal, he said, a newfound resolve in his voice. The following weeks were a tense waiting game. Jack prepped for the disciplinary hearing, the weight of the unknown hanging heavy. One day, Captain Harris summoned him to his office. The captain wore a grim expression. The hearing is tomorrow. They're recommending suspension without pay, possibly even dismissal. Jack nodded, bracing himself. I understand, sir. Captain Harris studied him for a long moment, then a flicker of something akin to respect crossed his features. You did the right thing, Miller, even if it cost you everything. It doesn't have to, Jack said, a sliver of hope flickering in his eyes. Maybe this is a chance to start over, to be the officer I always intended to be. The captain offered a faint smile. Second chances are rare, Miller. Don't waste it. The next day, Jack faced the disciplinary board. He laid bare his mistakes, his voice betraying his shame and remorse. He didn't plead for leniency, but for a chance to redeem himself. The outcome was uncertain, but as Jack walked out of the hearing room, he felt a sense of peace he hadn't experienced in a long time. Regardless of the verdict, he had taken a step towards redemption. The road ahead would be long and arduous, rebuilding trust one action at a time. 
but for the first time in a long time, Jack Miller felt like he was walking in the right direction. The verdict was a harsh slap, suspension for a year, without pay. Leaving the station that day, Jack felt the weight of his choices pressing down on him. He glanced at the worn leather badge case clutched in his hand, a symbol of both pride and shame. At home, the reality of his situation hit him hard. Sarah, his wife, greeted him with a worried frown. What happened? She asked, her voice laced with concern. Jack choked back a wave of guilt. He couldn't hide the truth any longer. He explained everything, the bribes, the fear, and finally, the decision to come clean. Sarah listened patiently, her hand reaching out to squeeze his. You did the right thing, she said, her voice firm but laced with understanding. It won't be easy, but we'll get through this together. Her unwavering support was a lifeline in the storm. The following year was a brutal test. They dipped into their savings, Sarah picked up extra shifts at the hospital, and their life became a constant exercise in frugality. But amidst the hardship, there was a newfound sense of unity. Jack spent his time volunteering at a local community center, mentoring troubled youth. Seeing their struggles, their vulnerability, mirrored his own past actions. He poured his heart into helping them, determined to be the positive influence he never had. One evening at the center, a familiar face walked in. It was Lil Ricky, a bit older, but the fear in his eyes still lingered. A wave of protectiveness washed over Jack. He spent the evening talking to Ricky, sharing his story, showing him a different path. News of his volunteer work reached the precinct. Captain Harris called him in for a meeting. The captain's usual stoicism was replaced by a hint of warmth. Your work at the center, it's impressive, Miller. Jack felt a flicker of hope. I just want to make a difference, Captain. The captain nodded. Your suspension is up soon. We've received several positive reports about your volunteer work. There's a possibility you might be reinstated on probation. The news was bittersweet. Probation meant constant scrutiny, every move under a microscope. But it was a chance, a chance to wear the badge again, with honor this time. The day he returned to the precinct was surreal. The whispers had subsided, replaced by a cautious curiosity. He was assigned to a new partner, a young officer with bright, idealistic eyes. He saw in her the reflection of the cop he once was, the spark he needed to rekindle. His first day back on patrol was a baptism by fire. A domestic violence call turned into a hostage situation. Drawing on years of experience, Jack de-escalated the situation, talking down the perpetrator before backup arrived. Later, in the quiet of the patrol car, his new partner, Officer Ramirez, spoke up. You were amazing out there. You had that situation under control. Jack smiled faintly. Just doing my job, officer. But not everyone does it like you, Ramirez continued. You showed him there was another way. Those words were like a balm to his soul. He wasn't just patrolling the streets, he was rebuilding trust, one interaction at a time. The road ahead was long, the past a constant shadow. But for the first time in a long time, Jack Miller felt like a cop again. And this time, a better one. The tarnished badge, once a symbol of his corruption, was slowly being polished, ready to reflect the officer he was determined to become. Months turned into years. Jack, now a seasoned officer on probation, patrolled the streets with a renewed sense of purpose. He mentored rookie officers, his own experiences serving as cautionary tales. He even volunteered at the community center whenever he could, his past a constant reminder of the path not to take. Life wasn't perfect. The financial strain lingered, and Sarah's unwavering support was a constant source of gratitude. One blustery autumn night, the tranquility shattered. A dispatch crackled over the radio, a robbery in progress at the local jewelry store. Jack and Ramirez sped towards the scene, adrenaline pumping. Reaching the store, they found a shattered storefront and a shaken store owner clutching a bloody hand. Jack, his heart pounding, took charge, securing the perimeter and calling for backup. Emerging from the alley behind the store, he spotted two figures fleeing into the night. Ramirez, you take the left. I'll go right, Jack barked, sprinting after the figures, his flashlight beam cutting through the darkness.
They weaved through a maze of back alleys, the pounding of his own feet the only sound. Reaching a dead end, Jack spotted the figures huddled beneath a fire escape. Police! Don't move! He shouted, aiming his weapon. One figure froze, hands raised. The other, however, whipped around, a glint of metal catching the beam of Jack's flashlight. A gut-wrenching recognition washed over him. It was Mikey Salucci, his face etched with desperation. Time seemed to slow down. Mikey's eyes darted between Jack and the gun in his hand. A wave of memories flooded Jack's mind. The bribes, the betrayal, the near-death experience of Lil Ricky. Mikey, drop the gun, Jack commanded, his voice firm but laced with a sliver of empathy. Mikey hesitated, the gun trembling in his hand. You snitched on me, Miller, now let me go. This isn't the answer, Mikey, Jack pleaded. Put the gun down before someone gets hurt. The tension crackled in the air. Then, sirens wailed in the distance, growing closer by the second. Mikey's face contorted in a mask of despair. Suddenly, he lunged forward, the gun aimed at Jack. Time seemed to warp, the world narrowing down to that cold metal barrel pointed at his chest. Instinct took over. Jack lunged to the side, a deafening shot shattering the night. Pain erupted in his shoulder, a searing fire lancing through him. He stumbled back, adrenaline masking the severity of the wound. Ramirez appeared beside him, his gun trained on Mikey. Mikey stood frozen, the gun slipping from his grasp and clattering onto the pavement. His face was a canvas of raw emotions, fear, regret, and a flicker of something akin to gratitude. Backup swarmed the scene, swarming over Mikey as Jack slumped against the wall, Ramirez applying pressure to his wound. As he drifted in and out of consciousness, he saw Mikey, handcuffed and subdued, his eyes locked with Jack's. There was no defiance, no anger, just a weary resignation. The following days were a blur of hospitals and recovery. The bullet, thankfully, hadn't hit any vital organs, but the physical wounds paled in comparison to the emotional ones. Facing down Mikey, his past coming full circle left an indelible mark. During his recovery, Sarah sat by his bedside, her hand holding his. You saved his life, Jack, she said, her voice filled with pride. Jack squeezed her hand weakly. I don't know, he whispered, the memory swirling in his head. Maybe I just gave him another chance. He knew the road to redemption was a long one, paved with good deeds and difficult choices. But as he looked at his badge, gleaming on the bedside table, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. The tarnish might never fully disappear, but its story served as a constant reminder of the officer he was, the officer he would continue to strive to be. The physical wound in Jack's shoulder healed relatively quickly, but the encounter with Mikey left a deeper scar. He returned to work with a newfound urgency, a need to prove himself not just to his colleagues, but to himself. His brush with death had been a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the weight of his responsibility. The precinct buzzed with the aftermath of the jewelry store robbery. Mikey, pressured by the weight of Jack's testimony and the incriminating evidence, had flipped on Frankie Moretti. A series of raids had crippled Moretti's operation, dealing a significant blow to organized crime in the city. Jack, despite being sidelined during the investigation, received a commendation for his role in bringing Moretti down. One day, a familiar face appeared at the precinct. It was Lil Ricky, now a young man with a determined glint in his eyes. He had joined a youth outreach program and was volunteering at the community center. Seeing Jack, he approached him hesitantly. Officer Miller, he greeted, a hint of nervousness in his voice. Jack smiled warmly. Ricky, how are you? I'm good, officer. I just wanted to thank you again for everything. Jack explained the call, the rising fear in his gut mirroring the sirens he could hear wailing in the distance. Mikey, desperate and unpredictable, could be anywhere. We'll get a team over to the center right away, the captain confirmed. But Miller, be careful. Mikey's a wild card. Jack hung up a knot tightening in his stomach. He needed to get to Alex before anyone else did. He sped towards the community center, his mind racing with possibilities. Reaching the center, Jack found it eerily quiet. The rain, which had stopped earlier, had left the air shimmering with an unsettling stillness. 
He pushed open the door, his gun drawn, caution his only guide. The main room was empty. Chairs knocked over and books scattered across the floor like fallen dominoes. A trail of struggle led to the back office. Jack approached cautiously, his heart pounding against his ribs. The door was ajar. Inside, Mikey stood facing Alex, a knife glinting in his hand. Alex, his back pressed against the wall, looked frozen in fear. Drop the knife, Mikey! Jack roared, stepping into the doorway. Mikey whipped around, his face etched with desperation. Stay back, Miller. This doesn't concern you. Jack kept his gun trained on Mikey, his voice firm. Let him go, Mikey. This isn't the answer. Mikey laughed, a harsh, hollow sound. You took everything from me, Miller. Now I'm taking something back. The room seemed to shrink, the only sound the ragged rasp of their breaths. Suddenly, a familiar voice echoed from the doorway. Mikey, it doesn't have to be this way. It was Sarah. She stood there, her voice trembling but resolute. Seeing her, Mikey's grip on the knife faltered, a flicker of recognition and regret crossing his features. Sarah, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. You don't understand. I understand more than you think, Mikey, she said, taking a tentative step forward. We all have a chance to make things right. Her words seemed to hang in the air, a fragile thread of hope in the tense atmosphere. Jack watched, his finger tightening on the trigger, a million thoughts swirling in his head. The silence stretched, broken only by the soft patter of rain on the roof. Finally, Mikey's shoulders slumped. He let out a defeated sigh and tossed the knife across the room, it clattering harmlessly on the floor. Relief washed over Jack so intense it almost made his legs buckle. He lowered his gun, his gaze locking with Mikey's. This wasn't a victory, not quite. It was a stalemate, a fragile peace built on the ashes of the past. Over the next few days, the dust settled. Alex, under witness protection, provided crucial testimony that helped dismantle the remnants of the serpents. Mikey, facing charges for the attempted kidnapping, disappeared into the prison system once again. Jack, reflecting on the events, felt a profound sense of closure. The tarnished badge, once a symbol of his shame, now glinted with a newfound light. It was a reminder of his mistakes, yes, but also of his redemption. He continued his service, his commitment to the community stronger than ever. And though the scars of his past remained, they served as a constant reminder of the importance of second chances, the power of forgiveness, and the relentless hope that could bloom even in the darkest places. The tarnished badge, once a burden, became a badge of honor, a testament to a journey that led him from darkness to a light that shone brighter than ever before. Years flowed by, etching new lines on Jack's face and turning his once dark hair a distinguished silver. He retired from the force a respected officer, leaving behind a legacy of integrity and community service. He spent his days volunteering at the youth center, passing on the wisdom and lessons learned from a life on both sides of the law. One sunny afternoon, a young man with nervous eyes approached Jack in the center's bustling activity room. He held a familiar flyer in his hand, the one advertising the center's programs. Officer Miller, he asked, his voice laced with a hint of awe. Jack smiled warmly. No need for the formalities, son. Call me Jack. The young man Daniel explained he was just released from a juvenile detention center and was looking for a fresh start. His story echoed many Jack had heard over the years, a troubled upbringing and a path leading him towards a dark future. Jack listened patiently, then shared his own story, not shying away from the mistakes that led him to this very room. He spoke of the corruption, the near-fatal encounter, and the long road to redemption. Daniel's eyes widened with each revelation. But why did you come back? He finally asked, a flicker of hope dawning in his gaze. Because there's always a choice, son, Jack replied, placing a hand on Daniel's shoulder. It's never too late to make a difference, to turn things around. In that moment, Jack saw a reflection of his younger self, a raw potential waiting to be nurtured. He shared his experiences on the force, the dangers and rewards of the badge, and most importantly, the power of second chances. As Daniel left the center that day, his head held a little higher, Jack couldn't help but feel a deep sense of satisfaction. The tarnished badge, once a symbol of his past transgression, 
had become a beacon, a testament to the transformative power of redemption. His journey from a fallen officer to a guiding force wasn't just his story. It was a testament to the enduring human spirit, the ability to rise above past mistakes and forge a legacy of hope and second chances. The tarnished badge remained, a constant reminder of the darkness overcome, and the unwavering light that shone brighter with each act of service and each life touched. The scars remained, but so too did the unwavering belief that even the most tarnished badge could become a symbol of courage, integrity, and the unending fight for a better tomorrow.